Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, you know, for, for those of you that attend these events regularly, you know that um, we often say that we, you know, as administrators, we so look forward to this event to be able to honor and celebrate our students and all their accomplishments. Um, and personally, I just love this event. Um, Brett, the sponsors, the chamber, uh, they do such an amazing job. Thank you so much for allowing this to happen. We're so appreciative. Um, I have the privilege and honor of introducing you to Isabella Bernabeo. Um, Isabella is definitely a standout student at, at Sage Creek High School in more ways than one. Um, when we talk with our students, uh, we talk a lot about adding value to our school community. And there's a lot of different ways to do that, but Isabella definitely is someone that has consistently added value to the entire Sage Creek community. Um, She's shown initiative as a leader on our campus, um, both in our multimedia journalism program, as well as taking on a leadership role um, in our multicultural club on campus. Um, I often in these, these uh, you know, when we're looking for rising stars and standout students, um, I often reach out to our staff to, you know, give me some highlights, give me, give me some things you wanna say, cause you know, we don't have our entire staff here to be able to speak. Um, so some of the comments from uh, Isabella's teachers, uh, let me just read some of these. Um, Isabella uh, is exceptional. She's open-minded, dedicated, ambitious, talented, tolerant, patient, and kind. And I could probably keep going, but I'm pretty sure Brett would start yelling at me, so I'm going I'm to pause it there. Um, but again, so many wonderful ways to describe Isabella and her, the characteristics that she exudes on a daily basis at our school. Um, it's very clear to me she's making strides in leadership. Um, and really, as I've always preached to our students and tasked our students, leave Sage Creek a better place from when you found it. And I truly believe Isabella is rising to that challenge and continuing to lead the right way. Uh, we see her on the weekly broadcast of The Sage, our, our multimedia journalism program. But I gotta be honest, I, I was even more impressed with her when talking with her about the multicultural club. Um, it was easy to, to understand her passion for sharing and learning about different cultures and experiences. Um, I love that she's working towards building an even more inclusive environment on the Sage Creek campus. Isabella, thank you so much for your leadership and being a rising star. And ultimately, as we always say, for being your Bobcat best. Um, you've added tremendous value to our entire school and our community. Keep up the great work you are doing. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm so honored to introduce you to Isabella Bernabeo. Hi, um, good morning everyone and thank you all for being here. As you all already know, I am the September Rising Star of Sage Creek High School. But in addition to that, I am also a daughter of Desiree and Vincent Bernabeo and a big sister to Donovan and Declan Bernabeo. I will pretty soon in a few months be a graduate from Sage Creek High School. But above all of that, the one thing I am most is a storyteller. So I'm going to tell you guys a story. <laughs> when I was in fourth grade, my teacher told our class that over the next few weeks, we would be creating our own short story. Being a very creative child, my story was about a sweater whose home belonged in a gas station. <laughs> After years of waiting and begging to be bought and loved by someone, she finally was. Um, of course, as every story has a problem, a problem just had to arise. So the sweater was accidentally left at a park by the little girl who had bought her. Refusing to accept her fate, the sweater went on a journey to return back to the little girl. After enduring a thunderstorm, a crazy dog, and even other humans trying to steal her, she finally returned back home, ensuring that everyone had that happy ending. After finishing my story and ridiculously bad drawings for this book, I had discovered that I loved writing stories. After some thought and a whole lot of passion, I decided that this is what I would pursue as my career. When I entered high school, I joined this, my school's publication, The Sage. My first year on the newspaper was extremely intimidating. I felt unbearable pressure to write the kinds of stories of my, that my favorite journalist wrote. Um, rather than writing about the social scenes or events happening on my school campus, I chose to dedicate my first article to highlight the tremendous efforts of the Unsung Heroes of Education, the hard work of the custodians and diligence in the face of COVID-19. 
When my article, The Impact of COVID-19 on CUSD Custodians, won an award called Best of Snow, I was really excited. However, when custodians themselves began thanking me, I was floored. Seeing the pride and genuine gratitude of the custodians was honestly more impactful to me than the other accolades. I was instilled with the feeling that I was doing meaningful work. That one article has been my greatest contribution, not only to my school and my Carlsbad community, but society as a whole. This experience drives me not only to find success in journalism, but also to share the unpublished narratives of the silenced. In the future, I plan to continue my work in journalism at Emerson College in Boston, Massachusetts. There, I will tell other people's tales, people who have never felt their story was heard or valued. I'd like to thank my mother, Desiree Bernabeo, for always supporting me and pushing me to do my best. She truly is the most phenomenal woman I know. I also like to thank my father, Vincent Bernabeo, for being the one person I know I can talk to any day about any subject. He is the reason I have a mind full of endless stories to share with you all. I'd like to thank my teacher, Mr. Henry, for nominating me to, be, to earn this award. And lastly, I'd like to thank the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce as well as all the sponsors for putting together this amazing celebration. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Frank Henry. I teach social studies at uh, Sage Creek. Uh, I should just say I didn't know that Mr. Schuyler is going to take almost all my points. <laughs> so, okay. um, it's very easy to speak highly of uh, Isabella. Um, as was mentioned, the Multicultural Student Association uh, is one of the most established clubs on campus. Um, and so I guess the only thing I'll say is a quick story. Um, I had Isabella, I think, in two classes, and about two years ago, um, like one of the first days in class, she basically took me aside and said, so Mr. Henry, I want to make sure I know exactly how to accomplish all these directions for all these assignments. I'm college bound and I want to know exactly what I need to do. Um, and since then, I've kind of known that she's, um, you know, definitely a model student dedicated to going to college. And she um, was very, had a lot of integrity uh, with the other students in my class. So thank you so much. It's hard to put into words my immense pride and gratitude I feel as the parent of Isabella. While this honorable distinction is a major accomplishment and an acknowledgement of her hard work and outstanding character, the award doesn't come as a surprise. From a very young age, Isabella stood out from the crowd, always going out of her way to help others while modeling good ethics. My daughter faced many hardships growing up, but she never let any, neg any negativity impact her beautiful and caring spirit. When she was in kindergarten, I got a glimpse of the outstanding young woman she would become when she received the Kindness Award. As she has matured, she has continued her pursuit of excellence, winning acclaim for the school's newspaper, writing about underrepresented topics, helping to care for her younger brothers, working two jobs, taking college classes, and maintaining impeccable grades. I am beyond proud to have been a part of raising such a good human who has already proven that she is a positive force for change and progress. Her father would have loved to be here today speaking to all of you, as he is the public speaker and I am not. <laughs> but I, I stand here overcoming my anxieties and fears because I am compelled by the courage and great accomplishments of Isabella. I love you. Right, that, was, that was wonderful. And so what I like to do at the end is to come back and kind of summarize some of the things that I heard you say, things that were said about you, and just some of the things that I took away from um, the presentations this morning. So starting with um, uh, Isabella. <clears throat> um, I love your whole storytelling um, you know, theme uh, that you've taken on, but also shared about you, uh, and how powerful that you know, you want to be a voice for those that are not heard and not seen. And uh, your example of, of highlighting the custodians in, in such a, you know, a weird time um, when they were doing crucial work, but it was all behind the scenes and nobody thought about what they were doing and what they were going through in circumstances like that. I think that is so amazing. Um, and I love, you know, how you said you want to continue to, to, um, 
to highlight those unpublished narratives of unsung heroes. Um, you know, we need so much more of that in this world. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Schuweiler talked about how um, open-minded, ambitious, and kind you are when you put all that together with a storytelling mindset of somebody who wants to represent the unrepresented. It can be very powerful and impactful in this world. And so, um, very excited about your future. Um, I I like to write myself, and so I always appreciate uh, good storytellers and, and people who have that passion because there's so much power that you can wield in a positive way through that gift. So thank you so much for sharing today.